Hey everyone, my name is Ian Sendera. I'm here today to give you a quick 10 minute introduction to both scenarios, the background to why we built a totally radical approach to how do we model the future, as well as give you a short demonstration into how it looks in the tool. So scenarios, first and foremost, probably one of the most common things we do as architects, whether you're a solution architect, a technical project manager, or an enterprise architect, you're probably designing some kind of future state, um, whether that's for a small integration change or a full strategic change in the organization. Trying to build a roadmap of the future is key for both communication, buy-in, and delivery. However, when those roadmaps are, are disconnected, we find that we have some cha challenges that we have to address. So why is it that uh, the current way of working is falling behind? Well, the rate of change is happening much more quickly. Uh, the scope of changes and the, how they're distributed across the entire organization is impacting our ability to keep an overview of the as-is, and all in all, we're struggling to deliver on change projects both on time and budget. The fact is that the common traditional EA tools have been heavily focused on the as-is, and for a long time this was true for RDoc, because we believed that having a strong understanding of where you were was the best place to start to understanding of how you're going to come to the future. However, while most uh, tooling has stopped right there, we've decided to take it one step further. When we are left to designing future states, we often see that people revert back to Visio, PowerPoint, you know, some sort of, of testing and, and maybe DevOps tools, or doing some sort of benefit analysis in, in Excel or even project management tooling. But these are all disconnected from the architecture. And when you're using the legacy architecture that's not integrated into the organization, a tool that is meant for experts, you're struggling to keep pace with the changing as is, you're struggling to keep pace with your designs and making sure that they're aligned with that as is, and you're struggling to engage and involve the wider organization. Basically, leaving your decisions to be totally disconnected from the reality of the organization. And we see this to be true, especially uh, the longer you are looking into the future. That is why we developed a totally different approach to how do we handle future state modeling. We took the lessons learned from collaborative code development and applied it to architecture. So everything you do in RDoc is basically transformed into data and put into a graph. And what we've done is allowed you to branch that graph in order to start modeling the future. Because most futures are based on your current state. So being able to branch, model, and compare allows you the understanding of where you were, where you're going to be, and what has changed. Now, the data-driven approach to branching is much different than just copying or tagging, which is what a lot of traditional tools will do. Copying and tagging clutters your production data, makes it very challenging to do proper analysis, and doesn't help you in keeping, keeping pace with the rate of change around you in your ecosystem. Branching, on the other hand, allows you to safely model the future without losing the connectivity to the changes that are happening. So as changes happen in real time, your branch is notified of those changes, allowing you to merge those changes into your designs, allowing your designs to keep pace, pivot, and adjust as things change. This allows you to avoid those painful consequences when projects go to deployment and you find out the goalposts have actually moved because of another project that was ongoing. Since we've done branching uh, in a very collaborative and SaaS way, you're allowed to collaborate across the organization on your designs, both in the way of communication through our living presentations, dynamic and automated visualizations, and, and completely automated diff analysis and, and heat mapping, as well as managing that approval flow of you know, allowing people to contribute to designs and then approving it into the mainline production data, similar to what you would do in a code review. So how does it work? Well, it's pretty straightforward if you understand code uh, collaboration and, and branching from that, from that respect. But if you're new to the idea of branching, it's completely radically different than what you're probably used to doing when it comes to working with future states. In Arctic, you have your mainline architecture, your, your as is. And this production data, this should be your source of truth. It should be as clean as possible and as trustworthy as possible and as detailed as possible. But when decisions happen and you want to make a change to that mainline, what we allow you to do is branch the mainline either in its entirety or in a subset of the data in order to start designing what the future could be. Now, a simple example would be simply branching around one system in order to create a new solution architecture. A more extreme example would be branching an entire value stream in order to align the organization towards a new strategic objective. The thing is with branches though, we can keep you up to date as I mentioned. So as you're, as you're designing your multiple futures, you're able to pull in data as it changes in, in the mainline. 
that allows you to manage many, many different types of roadmaps in parallel, in sync, without the manual labor of you know, updating diagrams and making sure that you're always up to date with what has changed. Now, when it comes to getting buy-in and support, we have those visualizations and presentations in order to distribute your different scenarios, analyze them and evaluate them, and come to decisions. At the decision point, you're, what you want to do is be able to merge the data back into the mainline as those changes imp are implemented. So we have the ability to merge partial or complete design changes back into the mainline, and that now has reevaluated your entire you know, architecture into a new source of truth. So the benefits of this are pretty clear. When you can model multiple future states, you're going to be more accurate in what you want to do and why. But it also enables your entire organization to be much more agile. Being able to adjust to the different scenarios, being able to adjust as the environment changes, allows for agility. When your roadmaps are too abstract, too distant, and too much looking into the future, you're not going to have the buy-in or the ability to deliver on those roadmaps with certainty. The more you can connect those roadmaps to the living changes in your organization, the more certainty you'll have in the organization, the more support, and the more ability for you to actually implement change. The data-driven aspect of it really allows you to empower your decision making and keep things, like I said, up to date. So by being data-driven, you can make sure that you're basing your decisions on the correct truth of data, but you can also utilize that data to run scenarios and, and, and impact analysis to understand things like the change in complexity, the change in cost, or in risk or security. Now, again, with the SAS approach, we do allow you to have that full collaboration that you expect throughout the visualizations, the data contribution, the designing, as well as the governance and approvals. So let's take a look at it in that. What you see now is RDoC in a typical situation where we're looking at maybe a critical application, in this case, an SAP ERP system. I've chosen to include the capabilities which it supports, the people who are the owners, the projects that are ongoing in that space already, as well as the contract that is governing this, this application. We also see on the bottom the servers that are in, uh, connected to the application. In the middle, you have the first level dependencies to other applications. Now, since this is an ERP system, there's quite a few integrations to consider. What I have here is the starting point of a potential new solution design. Maybe I'm adding some integrations to this ERP system, maybe I'm updating some existing ones, or maybe I'm adding completely new systems. Either way, what I'm going to need to do now is branch this scope of my architecture into a safe place to start modeling the future. What you see on the left-hand side here is a little branch icon. When I click that, what I'll be able to do is create a new scenario from this perspective. Now, this perspective or the scope for the scenario will be able to be changed at a later date. So this is just my starting point. When I create the scenario, I'll be prompted to add a new name. We'll call it the SAP design. And again, what we're doing is branching, not copying the data. So I'll have full connectivity to the changes in the ongoing environment. I can open my scenario. And you'll notice right away that this is the same UI that you had for your modeling for the as is. But now with the slight color change, just to remind the user that they're in a safe space in the scenario mode where changes they make here are not going to be impacting the mainline production data. So the other thing you'll notice is on the left hand side, we have a much narrower scope uh, of what we have open. So we have our, our different workspaces, which is our grouping of data to, to use for our modeling. And these workspaces are a subset of the data. So instead of having hundreds or thousands of application, I have somewhere like 20 apps. And the same goes for my people, my contracts, my servers. Now, the first point in that is that this subset makes it much more manageable and easy to include people into the scope of design than introducing them to your complete repository with thousands of things. So removing the clutter, increasing the ability to engage. The other thing you'll notice is you have a related um, section on the left-hand navigator, and that's totally unique to scenarios. What this is doing is it understands what you have included in your scope, and it's suggesting things that are connected to that so that you can be made aware of changes in your surrounding environment. So situational, situational awareness is really key here. So for example, I can see that I have some business products that are connected to this scope. And if I would like to include them, all I have to do is click that, it's now added to the scope of the scenario, and I can now follow that change in it changes that happen around those business products that are impacted by the ERP system. Again, keeping pace with change is critical here. I have all the visualizations that you would expect in RDoC, but now for your limited data set, and I still have all the functionality in creating heat maps, etc. 
So I can add a perspective here to, for example, group everything by the parent and workspace to add some, some grouping, right? Now, let's say we make some changes. Let's say we're gonna remove Workday. We can delete that. Again, we're not deleting a component from our repository. We're simply deleting it from the future state design. We can maybe create a new application. So if I go into here, I can create a new app. We'll say we create a new app for Microsoft Teams. And we've added that application. That's popped up on the left-hand side here. I can create a relationship and say that Teams is integrated with the ERP system. I can say that's a two-way integration following the same meta model that I have in my as-is. And again, you can change that. So if you need to keep that up to date, you can do that as well. And just in doing so now, I've, I've changed by deletion. I've changed by adding and I've created a new reference. I'm also gonna change some statistics or some attributes on the ERP system. So I'm gonna say it goes from $800,000, we renegotiate to let's say $750,000 a year. Okay, so I made a small change to the attributes. Those three things are now all tracked. And on the right hand side here, you can see this visual diff button. When I hit that, what I'll do is automatically diff the difference between our current main line and our as is designs. What that does is allows you to highlight quickly for your stakeholders what is in the scope of change and what is the impact of that change. So here we see the Microsoft Teams has been added, Workday has been removed, and an edit has been done to the uh, ERP system. Hovering over that, you can see what has been edited. Now when the time comes, I might need to merge this data back into the main line as production data. That's where you have the merge icon up here. So if we open the merge flow, I can go from scenario to mainline or vice versa. And again, keeping those things in sync. For this example, we'll look just at merging the scenario back to the mainline. What it's doing is analyzing everything that's changed in the scope compared to what we have in the mainline and providing you a step-by-step -step process in order to update components, the fields, when they were created or, or deleted, as well as references and tags. So here you see that we have Workday. It has been deleted and in doing so has also deleted two references. I can choose to delete those components and merge it back to the main line. Since my production data, I'm not gonna do that right now. But the next step might be sharing these designs with stakeholders. So you have the full support of creating your visualizations as I mentioned, but you also can add them to your presentations. So I can add this to a presentation and I can say this is part of our future state presentation. We have one already created. When I add that, I now have multiple different views of multiple different scenarios across different branches. And I can use these to communicate, here are our options, here are the impacts, and here are the changes. If you'd like to see more on scenarios and how it can be utilized in the data you have, feel free to reach out to your customer success manager at cs at rdoc.com, or if you're new to RDoc, reach out to sales at rdoc.com and get a demonstration tailored to your needs. We look forward to hearing from you.